So I've just finished The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros and let's talk about it. As I expected, it's a book that you could easily underestimate because it's only 110 pages. It takes just a couple of hours to read it, but it's actually a very thoughtful uh, Billumsgroman. You see Esperanza going through all of the hardship of being born into this family of Latin immigrants in growing up in Chicago. Um, and it's very thoughtful, there's, there's a lot to unpack. The writing style itself was really giving me some Ocean Vuong in that this is a classic case of here we have a poet who is trying their hand at prose and because they're used to writing poetry, the nature of their prose and their novel writing is unconventional and I know some people will dislike that because some people just naturally don't like um, poetry or they prefer a more traditional way of writing prose but I found it to be quite refreshing um, the way that it's structured it's so much more surreal um, and, I, and I didn't expect it because I didn't know anything about this writer so to see their style it, it reminded me so much of Honor for Briefly Gorgeous and because I liked that book so much I took comfort in that but I guess some people wouldn't if you didn't like that book either. It's also quite clever because it's doing that thing that made To Kill a Mockingbird such an enduring classic where it's taking serious issues that are already quite challenging to talk about at length but because the main character is a child we see the whole thing through her adolescent guise and so everything is a lot more straightforward and matter of fact and she's she's sort of experiencing it all for the first time and us already knowing the way of the world it's interesting to see that sort of expression it's a fun juxtaposition as well because the book itself is so lightweight physically like it's hardly anything and you're turning the pages so quickly because there really isn't a lot of writing on them but the actual subject material is very serious and you know can be quite upsetting and so it's 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 an interesting cross you know it's not like a little life where that's a book that is epic and vast and also upsetting this is sad but s sad in like a, a bite-sized amount which interesting i liked as well that by the end of the book esperanza has sort of figured out that she needs to carve her own destiny and that yes community is important but she also wants to be a strong independent woman who has her own house and that should be okay i would say my personal favorite chapter was bums in the attic but i did also enjoy was it no speak english yeah no speak english that one was good as well so i would say if you want a modern classic by a latin american author that is able to teach you very gently and take your hand uh, into a world that you might not be familiar with um, and it's also not hitting you over the head with it like it's not aggressively soapboxing about social deprivation and uh, anti-immigration rhetoric and anti-feminist rhetoric it's actually much more artistic and surreal um, give the house on mango street a try it's as I expected it's a fabulous book